Blackwing Lair is coming, and to help your guild get ready for its arrival, I've prepared a list of 15 things that might help you on your journey to Ashkandi. I thought about making a full-fledged guide, but I've noticed a few of those are up already. That being said, if you want to see my version of a comprehensive Blackwing Lair guide, which would feature things like trash, bosses, and a lot of other goodies, leave a like on the video, and if we hit, I don't know, 2,000 likes, I'll go ahead and make the guide. Here are my 15 tips <laughs> I get it. to help your guild clear Blackwing Lair. Number one, have your entire raid download the same threat add-on. This is one of the most important tips I can give you. Unlike Molten Core, Blackwing Lair is mostly comprised of Black Dragonkin, who are by default untauntable. This means that threat management is a core mechanic throughout the entire instance. If you don't want to spend the week wiping to Broodlord's Cleave, I highly, highly, highly recommend you and your entire raid download the same threat meter if you haven't already. I say the same because some threat meters pull data from adjacent players, so picking a single add-on for the entire group can give you the most accurate readings. The two most common threat add-ons for Classic are Classic Threat Meter and Details. I've personally used both, and while I prefer Details, I can vouch for CTM as well. Number 2. Bring 4 tanks to BWL your first week. This is a tip that rarely gets mentioned in guides, but in my opinion is incredibly helpful especially for the first few lockouts. Blackwing Lair really ups the ante when it comes to tank mechanics, so it's nice to have an extra damage soaker if things get out of control. Having a fourth tank on Razorgore means an easy orb phase, an extra threat tank on Broodlord means a reduced chance the boss will turn towards the melee, an extra tank on Firemaw, Ebonrock, and Flamegore means easier damage control if taunts are resisted, and so on and so forth. Having four tanks is not the min-max, speedrun, theoretically perfect setup, but from a practical standpoint, it's a great way to ease your group into BWL and get that week one clear under your belt. Number 3. Have your main tank destroy the last egg on Razor Gore. One of the quickest ways to wipe on Razor Gore is for tanks to lose early threat on the boss. An easy solution to this problem is having your main tank swap with the orb controller before the last egg is destroyed. This strategy works well because Razor Gore automatically targets the last orb controller when he breaks free, so by having your main tank destroy the last egg and unleash the boss, you'll guarantee a smooth transition to the final phase and keep Razor Gore locked onto your tank. Number 4. Save cooldowns on Razor Gore. All cooldowns 10 minutes and longer should be conserved during Blackwing Lair's first boss encounter. That's because Veilistraz, who immediately follows Razor Gore, is a timed DPS race that can lock up your raid ID if not completed within one hour of the first pull. Saving cooldowns like Lay on Hands and Recklessness for Veil means a higher likelihood of success against a boss that can otherwise completely destroy your raid. Number 5. Don't rush into Veil's room after Razor Gore. Part of me wanted to leave this off this list as a troll, but I gotta look out for you guys. Do not rush into Veil's room after killing Razor Gore. Instead, wait for loot to be distributed, then group up together and move as a single unit into the next room. You'll find that entering the room will aggro the Blackwing Technicians almost immediately, which is why I put this tip on this list. Techies do an insane amount of AoE damage and can wipe a group if aggroed prematurely. Number 6. Don't forget to cast while you have Burning Adrenaline. If you get the Burning Adrenaline debuff on Veil, your spells become instant cast and do 100% increased damage. You also die after a short period of time and need to run to the back of the room to make sure you don't blow up anybody else in your raid. While you're running, don't forget to continue casting. You'll still die in a few seconds, but those extra spell casts while moving can be the difference between a kill and a wipe. Number 7. Take Mana Breaks During the Suppression Room Gauntlet Because the Suppression Room is a gauntlet, most raids try to blitz through it as quickly as possible. This is not the correct strategy, as the gauntlet is longer than it appears and mana becomes an issue over time. Make sure you're taking adequate food and water breaks in the side pockets of the Suppression Room to prevent overexertion of your healers. You don't want them to oom and have to start all over again. Number 8. If you ever pull threat in BWL, run towards the tanks. Most bosses in Blackwing Lair have a nasty cleave or frontal cone that can one-shot a raid. If you're a DPS and you happen to over-aggro, try to stay calm and simply turn the boss back towards the tanks. It'll save you a wipe. Number 9. Clear out the entire suppression room after Broodlord. After you kill the third boss of Blackwing Lair, Broodlord Lash Lair, make sure to turn the entire raid around and clear out the remaining whelps in the suppression room. 
Also, make sure you disable all the remaining devices, as the next trash pack after Broodlord requires a ton of space to deal with, and you don't want anything slowing you down or constricting your movement while avoiding Reign of Fires and Blackwing Technicians. Number 10. Use Greater Fire Protection Potions on the Warlock Packs in Blackwing Lair. This tip is somewhat expensive, but I highly recommend it if it's your first time doing this raid. As you may have noticed in Molten Core, abilities in vanilla aren't really telegraphed as clearly as later expansions, and with Blackwing Lair's restricted camera angles, it can be difficult to tell exactly where AoE abilities are landing. Having a GFPP popped during the Warlock trash packs in BWL will save you a few deaths from AoE and potentially even a wipe. As you get accustomed to the orientation of the Reign of Fires and the small working space, you can slowly wean off of GFPPs in your next lockout. Number 11. Have your entire raid equip their Nixia scale cloaks on the three Drake encounters. The three Blackwing Lair Drakes, Fire Maw, Ebon Rock, and Flame Gore, all employ a frontal cone Shadow Flame. While the ability should only affect the tanks as it's a frontal cone, it's still a good idea to have the entire raid equip their Nixia cloaks here, as the Drake's Wing Buffet ability drops tank threat and increases the probability of DPS pulling aggro and facing a Shadow Flame towards the raid. If this happens, anyone who isn't wearing an Anixia scale cloak will likely die, so make sure to equip the cloaks as a safety measure for the first week until your tanks get more comfortable with threat generation. Number 12. Use free action potions on the Death Talon Worm Guard packs. Some people joke that the 3-pack before Chromagus is harder than the actual Drake bosses preceding it. That's because Death Talon Worm Guards hit for a ton of damage and have a War Stomp ability that stuns everyone within a few yards. Make sure your tanks and melee DPS use free action potions whenever you're facing the Worm Guards, as doing so will grant you immunity to the War Stomp and increase the likelihood to survive those packs. Number 13. Use Resto Pots on Chromagus. Chromagus is one of the toughest bosses in BWL due to his debuffs and brood afflictions. It's highly recommended to use restorative potions against Chromagus, as healers and mages will be burning through their mana to dispel and decurse the raid. Having the entire group use restorative pots during this encounter will help healers conserve precious resources and keep their focus on the tanks will be taking the brunt of the damage in this 5 minute encounter, especially during the enrage phase. Number 14. Log out for 10 minutes after Chromagus. One of the most punishing mechanics in all of BWL is Chromag's Bronze Brood Affliction debuff, which will periodically stun affected players for the entirety of its duration. 10 minutes. You won't be able to clear this debuff with conventional means, so once you've downed the boss, it's highly recommended that you log out for 10 minutes and wait out the debuff's duration. This will help conserve precious minutes on expensive consumables like flask timers and world buffs, while at the same time, get rid of a dangerous debuff that will otherwise get you killed on Nefarian. And number 15, my final tip for Blackwing Lair progression, Clear comms! Blackwing Lair is a communication heavy raid. Tanks need to be calling out taunt rotations, orb controllers need to be coordinating, bombs need to be called out, threat tables need to be called out, gauntlets need to be coordinated, class calls, CC, so on and so forth. While BWL isn't a mythic difficulty raid, it can be pretty punishing, so make sure to keep discord lines clear so your group doesn't fudge one of the mechanics, especially when it comes to threat and aggro. Can we get a B-Res on Zulace, please? But thanks for watching the video, guys. If you liked what you saw, sub it up and stick around because we got more coming. I have a small announcement to make. I'll be raid leading a Blackwing Lair pug on the first week of launch this coming Wednesday. If you want to hear your fair share of clear comms or yo taunt, feel free to tune in on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash tipsoutbaby. Memes aside, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And also before we go, guys, I just want to say thank you to everyone for your well wishes after my previous video. I have an update to share with you guys about my health, but I'll save that until after BWL. I've got a couple more videos coming and I don't want to waste a day spending on a health update video when I could otherwise get you guys some BWL prep content. But aside from that, guys, have a wonderful day, fellas. I'll see you guys on Twitch. And as always, tips out, baby.